game. Now we are opening up the phone lines this morning for CNN Men's Basketball, 476-1045. And the poll question up on our uh, Twitter page, 1045. The team did uh, at Siena Saints get it right with the hire of Jamian Christian from Mount St. Mary's. That is now official. And a lot of the yes votes coming in at 76% to 24% with some early votes in on our Twitter page. Seth Greenberg, as promised, joins us. ESPN College basketball and NBA analyst Seth Roger Weiland, Chris Honorado in Albany. Good morning, Seth. Good. How are you guys doing? Morning, We're good, Coach. Coach. We appreciate it. We've been uh, involved in the who's coaching Sienna next, and now we know the answer, and that is uh, Jamian Christian. I wondered, and I'm asking you on the fly here, do you do you know him at all? Do you know anything about him? Oh, yeah, really him? well. Yeah, really well. Okay. Yeah, very, very good young coach. Very, very good coach, not just a very good young coach. Very good communicator. They'll play an exciting brand of basketball. It's not pure habit, but it'll be um, a very aggressive style, full-court defense, using the three-point shot, attacking off the bounce. Very good evaluator of talent. Uh, lost a number of players a year ago to Texas and other schools. Uh, basically evaluated what I call evaluated up, which is important, which is what you have to do when you're at Siena. Uh even keeled, uh, a good guy, and I, I, I'm a big Jimmy Patsos fan. This is, I mean, you guys yeah. full disclosure. I think Jimmy's a very good coach. I think that you know, he, he, what what transpired, in my opinion, was probably misunderstood and misinterpreted because I've been around Jimmy. You know, he cuts it up a little bit, but he, you know, he's not anything those what they're, they're accusing him of being. But uh, Jamie will do a really, really good job. Uh, I think he he checks every box: communicator, teacher, evaluator. Um, the very even keeled, but has a has a controlled intensity. Uh, let me just follow up and say I agree with you on Jimmy Patsos. We we have moved on from that, but we are uh, we we uh, I think Jimmy is is a really good guy, and and I we wish him nothing but the best of luck and and all of what you said. Now let me ask you this: as a former coach, Seth, how difficult of a job is this going to be for Christian coming in so late in the game? Yeah, it's coming in late from the game. He's going to try to have to re-recruit some of the guys on his roster. Uh, it's not like you're coming into Duke, North Carolina, and you're dealing with the ACC. The one thing about you know their conferences is a more level playing field. It's not like anyone has that much better a player uh, year in year out than anyone else. Uh, so I mean, you've got an attractive situation. Seattle's got a rich tra- basketball tradition. They've got a built-in fan base. Uh, uh, they've got a you know a place that's had success. Uh, I know they built a practice facility, so. You've got a lot of good things. Now, how many players are available? Well, there are more good players available playing at that level than they are if you've taken over a job at the very highest level. Uh, you know, you've got to get lucky. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you've got to make sure you don't use scholarships and make four-year mistakes. But uh, I think that there's still time to find guys that you know, are going to go late, uh, fifth-year guys, uh, and you know, and other ways to, you know, maybe internationally a little bit to find a, a player or two that can help you. ESPN, Seth Greenberg with us here on Big Board Sports 104.5, the team ESPN Radio, former Virginia Tech head coach, of course, as well. Uh, coach, when, when, as you describe Jamie and Christian's style of play, it, it seems like everybody is trending in that direction. Can you take what you currently have in the cupboard and turn players into that, or do you specifically need to recruit talent for that? In other words, like, could we be talking about Sienna having real success two, three years down the road as opposed to next season? Yeah, I don't, I don't know Sienna's roster well enough to, to, to make a comment on that. I mean, look, people are playing that way because, you know, especially if, if, in that league and at that level. Like when I coached at Long Beach State, we, we didn't have a five, uh, four guy and a five guy. We had a three guy and a four guy. Uh, you have more skilled players on the court. You're going to play with two point guards. Uh, you're going to spread the court. Uh, you're going to, you're going to be interchangeable offensively and defensively. And so I don't know the players they have returning well enough to, you know, to say that I know a number of players ask for their releases. Uh, you know, now it's, you know, it'll be interesting to see if students are still on campus and, they take the time to sit down with coach and and give him an opportunity to share his vision. Seth, do you, and I don't know the answer to this question. That's what I'm going to ask you. What, if you're coach Christian, you're leaving Mount St. Mary's and you have some incoming recruits coming in. Is there a chance that some of those recruits make a detour and end up at Siena? Not if they sign letters in 10, I would think that, you know, I mean, and that school gave him an opportunity, and I think that's actually, if I'm not mistaken, no, he, I think, he, did he play at Mount? Or he did, he, he did, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to do anything to impact his legacy and, and the relationships that he has a lifetime of, of memories with. So he's not going to recruit players right off his own roster. He's not going to try to turn players that have already signed uh, for Mount. On the other hand, if there were players that were uncommitted that he was recruiting, that he was still recruiting, yeah. I'm sure that uh, he would for sure at least say, look, you know, if you're interested, you know, I have scholarships available. You know, Mount's a great situation, but, you know, uh, you know, there's an opportunity here that you might want to take the time to learn more about. Seth, one more for me. That's on the NBA. If, the, if there was a game that th- the Toronto Raptors oh, were going goodness. to get, wasn't it last night against the Cleveland Cavaliers? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Toronto lost that game as opposed to Cavaliers winning it. And and, I, and where I disagree, look, they got great scoring opportunities. They they did a great job of establishing the low post. Uh, they did a really good job playing LeBron basically one on one. But look, if you can play him one on one, you can't give up fourteen threes and you can't turn it over fourteen times for twenty one points. It's really that simple. Uh, so I think they need to win one close game. They can win this next game and, uh, and close out a game. They can steal one in Cleveland. Uh, I like the idea of playing LeBron one-on-one. Uh, they've got to figure out those small, small ball screens uh, late in the game when Corver set that screen on LeBron. Uh, the last play, they switched it, which kept it front and got that good contested shot. Uh, early on, uh, two plays before that, they got a pick and pop on a second pass for three, and then they got that one play where, uh, you know, because of, of of that ball screen, LeBron got downhill and, and got away the rim. But I think Toronto did a lot of good things, and they just got they got to find a way to close out a game. They got great scoring opportunities. They missed so many shots around the basket, and it wasn't for lack of you know having a chances to win that game. And that's what, as a coach, you got to explain to your team. I just say, if Fred makes that shot, mm. if as Augustus, uh, you know, if we if we make one 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 tap in, all right, how do we feel about ourselves? Coach, can, you got to do, you, you got to get to the next play. Can you put into perspective for us? And Roger has a, a big man crush on Brad Stevens, but can you put <laughs> into perspective for us the job that Stevens is doing, considering all of the talent he's lost to injury? Yeah, he's lost a ton of talent. I think defensively, they almost have a mindset defensively of a college team in terms of their help and their extension and uh, their you know their ball movement. Uh, they also have good players. They've done a great job developing Terry Rozier. Yeah, you know they they went and got Al Horford for a reason. Jason Tatum. They went and made that trade. I I said going into the draft, I thought that the number one player in the draft was Jason Tatum. Now I didn't realize Donovan Mitchell was going to be that good. <laughs> but uh, they still got good players. But Brad's done just an amazing job, and I think it's his calm leadership. Really, uh, I think that he doesn't overreact. Uh, he's very matter of fact. He's extremely demanding, but he does it in a way that uh, you know, want the players want to play well. Uh, they, and they're so well prepared. Uh, he's done an amazing job. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, and they've got a good team. And Danny's done an amazing job. Seth, I know you're doing uh, one ESPN hit after <laughs> another, so I, I don't want you to miss that. So we we appreciate a few minutes. Uh, our main reason was to to uh, ask you about uh, Jamie and Christian, the new head coach at Siena, and you gave great insight there on that. I'm sure our listeners appreciate that, and we uh, we appreciate a few minutes here on Big Board Sports. Great. My pleasure. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Seth. Appreciate it.